I was against joining a fraternity. I never was in a fraternity. We knew people in Fiji, the fraternity, and we spoke to them, and, and they said we would love to have Danny. And so we pulled the trigger and said, all right, you're going to Fiji. When the lead detective from the zoo police called me that day, to introduce himself and say he was going to be taking over this investigation. He's the one that said, there's 20 plus cameras in the house. As a father, I have to be strong because I want to know exactly what happened to Danny that night. And it kills me to watch it. The investigation took a long time. All of a sudden, two kids got felonies. And then a couple weeks later, maybe a month, eight more kids got felonies. So far, 11 boys have been charged and they're awaiting court dates. The only way these kids are gonna learn from their mistakes is you need to have serious consequences. And to me, that is given a felony. That's exactly what happened. The family's attorney, David Bianchi, says this is the worst hazing injury he's seen in 43 years of practice. Now, David, there's just common sense involved here, right? And they just abandoned that. They did. Uh, they did. But you need to understand that this is not an exception to the rule. The Danny Santulli case is not a one-off. Since the year 2000, 65 fraternity pledges have died as a result of fraternity hazing. If you do the math, that's one every four months. So it's going on and on. And the, the result has been that everybody seems to think, well, let's adopt more rules and regulations at the university level, and let's pass more anti-hazing laws at the state level, and that'll stop it. And yet 65 have died since the year 2000. So what we're doing is not working. The only thing that might work is if you do two things. One, the university adopts a policy that says, if anybody gets seriously injured or dies as a result of fraternity hazing, Every officer of the chapter will be immediately expelled, and everybody who participated in the event will be immediately expelled. And the second thing you need to do is the local prosecutors have to be willing to file criminal hazing charges under the laws that are already on the books so that they can hold these guys accountable. And too often, that does not happen. It wasn't like they hadn't been warned. <laughs> they had been more than warned. They had been sanctioned sanctioned. And uh, we have the documents. And uh, just 13 days before this happened, they received a letter from the University of Missouri saying, because of your bad conduct previously, which, by the way, was one year ago today, the day we're filming this, it was one year ago today, that that bad conduct resulted in the second sanction letter from the university. And the next day, they all got together and started planning the event that resulted in these horrible injuries to Danny. And you can set your clock by the fact that the same hazing event occurs in the same month every year, because that's part of the tradition. The universities know it, the national fraternities know it, and they know it's coming up. It's like a ticking time bomb. They know when it's going to go off, and they don't intervene to stop it. What do you guys think about this? Yes, over here. Uh, I was in a fraternity, ended up leaving, and this stuff just doesn't surprise me at all because the leadership is designed to cover up um, all the wrongdoings that are inevitable. You know, when you have 60, 80 guys in an organization, you're gonna have bad apples, and the leadership is designed to cover up all the bad things that are inevitable. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.